First, it's important to recognize the difference between the two. A market economy is a tool, a valuable and effective tool, for organizing productive activity. But a market society is a place where everything is up for sale. It's a way of life where market, where market values reach into every sphere of life. And that can be damaging because sometimes market values can crowd out or erode non-market values worth caring about. The book asks a simple question, simple to state, not so easy to answer. What should be the role of money and markets in our societies? Today there are fewer and fewer things that money can't buy. Money can buy prison upgrades in some places. We outsource war to private military contractors. We use cash incentives to try to motivate behavior in health and in education. Markets and market reasoning have extended their reach over the last three decades into almost every sphere of life. And what the book argues is that we need to step back and debate as democratic societies where do markets serve the public good and where do they not belong. In Washington, D.C., on Capitol Hill, the seats to attend congressional hearings are open to the public on a first-come, first-served basis. Many lobbyists want to attend, but they don't want to stand in a long line waiting. So there is now an industry of line-standing companies that hire homeless people and others to stand in the line. They pay them a certain hourly wage. And just before the hearing begins, the lobbyist arrives and takes his or her place in the queue. Essentially, it's, it's like ticket scalping at a concert, except this is ticket scalping for access to representative government. What's happening today, and really just over the last three decades, is in some ways we're going back. We now fight our wars increasingly with private military companies. In Iraq and Afghanistan, there were more paid military contractors on the ground then there were U.S. military troops. Now, we never had a public debate about whether we wanted to outsource war to private companies, but that's what's happened. We see increasingly the rise of for-profit prisons, the use of market mechanisms to motivate students to do well in school, to get good grades, or to read books even, the use of cash incentives to try to get people to be healthy, to lose weight, so more and more, we are not only privatizing public facilities, we are using market incentives and market mechanisms to try to motivate behavior in many aspects of social life. And the question is, where do cash incentives and financial inducements contribute to the public good, and where might they crowd out values, non-market values, such as the love of learning in the case of schools, that money itself can't replace.